Are you brand new to the world of Warhammer 40,000? Are you looking to get into the lore, to truly understand the universe? Well, you've come to the right place. There are plenty of 40k lore videos out there that attempt to explain the grim dark world of Warhammer 40,000, and while many of them do a fantastic job, in my opinion, a lot of them are still overly complicated. The idea behind this video is to essentially summarize the important bits so you can jump into any video game or novel or even the tabletop game itself and have a good grasp of what is going on. So when you hear talk of Primarchs or Heresy, you can get involved in the conversation. I genuinely believe that 40k is one of, if not the coolest fictional universe ever created, and the more people that get into it, the better. So with that being said, let's get into it. In the bleak and distant future of Warhammer 40,000, the Milky Way galaxy stands on the precipice of annihilation. The vast cosmic expanse filled with billions of stars and untold civilizations is a dark, foreboding realm where hope is fleeting. At the heart of this galaxy lies the Imperium of Man, a colossal and decaying interstellar empire, bound together not by progress or prosperity, but by faith in the God Emperor and a collective will to survive. This is an era of endless warfare, where humanity's bastions of civilization are constantly besieged by alien empires, ancient horrors, and the insidious powers of chaos from the alternate dimension known as the Warp. The very fabric of reality seems to groan under the weight of conflict, as vast armadas clash in the void and entire planets burn. The Imperium's gothic megacities, known as Hive Cities, rise from planets like metallic mountains, housing billions in squalor and darkness. Here, arcane technology mingles with medieval sensibilities, and colossal titans and spacecrafts are revered as holy relics. Amidst this backdrop of eternal strife and gothic decay, heroes and villains rise, each seeking to shape the galaxy's fate in this perpetual, grimdark opera of war and sacrifice. So that's my little introduction of the world out of the way, let's get into the history of the world itself. The Age of Terror This is the rise of humanity. Earth, also known as Terra, sees the birth and evolution of mankind. Eventually, advanced technologies lead to a golden age of exploration, colonization, and technological progress. The Age of Strife, a period of regression and collapse. Wars, both nuclear and psychic, devastate Terra and its colonies. Psychers, humans with psychic abilities, emerge, causing havoc due to their uncontrolled power, which ends up attracting warp entities. We then move on to the Age of the Imperium. The Emperor of Mankind, a powerful psyker and warlord, rises on Terra, uniting its war-torn populace. He begins the creation of the Primarchs, genetically engineered superhumans. They were designed to be superior to all other human beings in nearly every way, intellectually, physically, and psychically. Each of them is a master of warfare, embodying specific aspects of combat, leadership, or strategy. The Emperor created the Primarchs to lead his great crusade to reunite humanity across the galaxy, but they are scattered across the galaxy by the forces of chaos. Having recognized the threat they could pose, they were all put on different planets. Each Primarch then grew up on a different world, influencing and often rising to dominate those worlds based on their inherent abilities and characteristics. We then move on to the Great Crusade. The Emperor creates the Adeptus Astartes, also known as Space Marines, using the genetic templates of the Lost Primarchs. He then embarks on a galaxy-wide campaign to reunite humanity's lost colonies, during which he discovers the Lost Primarchs one by one. As each Primarch is rediscovered, they are given command of the Space Marine Legion that had been created using their specific genetic material. The next major event in the timeline is the Horus Heresy, and this one is hugely important. Horus was one of the Emperor's most trusted and greatest Primarchs. He is corrupted by chaos and turned against the Imperium. He leads a massive civil war with half of the Space Marine Legions and several Primarchs turning traitor. It culminates in a huge battle on Terra, where Horus is defeated but the Emperor is gravely wounded. He is placed on the Golden Throne, a life support system where he remains to this day. The Time of Endin This is a more recent era characterized by worsening conditions across the Imperium. Chaos is rampant and alien threats are multiplying. A massive warp rift bisects the galaxy. Then, in the settings present in the 42nd millennium, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, Rebute Gilliman, one of the Emperor's most loyal sons thought lost, is revived. He takes command of the Imperium's fractured forces to wage war on its numerous enemies. The galaxy is more divided and chaotic than ever, and every faction is vying for dominance. Since then, a second loyal Primarch, the Primarch of the Dark Angels, Lionel Johnson, has also returned, so things are starting to look up, if that's possible within this universe. So with that very brief history and timeline covered, let's talk a little bit about the major factions that you need to know. We of course have the Imperium of Man. 
It's the largest and most powerful political entity in the galaxy of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. It's a vast, sprawling empire that encompasses a million worlds and stretches across the Milky Way. Here are the key details. The state religion is the worship of the Emperor as the one true god of mankind. This faith is propagated and enforced by the Adeptus Ministorum. Over time, the Emperor, who originally denounced any form of worship towards him, has become an object of fanatical worship. The Imperium is not so much a centralized empire, but rather a confederation of worlds that owe allegiance to Terra. The daily governance is overseen by the High Lords of Terra, representing various powerful organizations like the Inquisition, the Adeptus Mechanicus, and others. The Imperium boasts vast and varied military forces. There's the Astra Militarum, also known as the Imperial Guard. They are the primary ground forces, made up of countless regiments from various worlds. Then there's the Adeptus Astartes, also known as Space Marines. Genetically enhanced super soldiers organized into different chapters, each founded on the gene seed of the original Primarchs. There's the Imperial Navy, responsible for the vast naval battles in the void of space. The Adeptus Sororitas, or the Sisters of Battle, the militant arm of the Ecclesiarchy. There's also the Adeptus Custodes, the Emperor's personal bodyguard, considered the absolute pinnacle of human evolution without the genetic modification of the Astartes. There's the Inquisition, a powerful and secretive organization that acts outside of the regular hierarchy. They aim to protect humanity from threats within, without, and beyond. They deal with heresy, alien influence, and demonic incursions. The Adeptus Mechanicus. They are based on Mars and are the technological and industrial heart of the Imperium. They worship the Omnissiah, a deity that they associate with the Emperor, and they are responsible for manufacturing and maintaining the Imperium's vast war machines, ships, and equipment. The Imperium at this time is in a state of constant war and decay. Bureaucracy, superstition, and repression plague its worlds. Knowledge is hoarded and technological regression is commonplace. The once visionary goals of the Emperor have become twisted over time into a dogmatic, oppressive regime that often employs brutal methods to maintain order and faith. The Imperium faces threats from almost all sides. Externally, they are under constant assault by Xenos species like the Orcs, the Tyranids, the Eldar, and the Tau. Internally, heretical cults, rogue psychers, and rebellions threaten stability. From the warp, the forces of chaos led by the traitor Space Marine Legions and other corrupted entities seek to bring down the Imperium. Nowhere is safe. The overarching theme of the Imperium is one of grim darkness, with the tagline of Warhammer 40,000 famously stating, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. The Imperium embodies this sentiment, representing both the tenacity and indomitable spirit of humanity and the tragic, oppressive measures they take in their bid for survival. As the Imperium is sort of the heart of the 40k universe, I put a lot of detail on them, but here is a brief overview of the other key players within the universe. Like I mentioned, there is the Chaos Armies, a malevolent force rooted within the warp, a parallel dimension of raw emotion and energy, comprising of four primary Chaos Guards, Khorne, Nurgle, Zinch, and Slanesh, each representing different facets of emotion and desire. Chaos corrupts and tempts mortals, leading to mutations, heresies, and demonic incursions. Many have turned traitor to serve these dark powers, including the infamous Chaos Space Marines, former Adeptus Astartes who have forsaken the Emperor's Light. We also have the Eldari, an ancient and highly advanced alien race whose vast empire once dominated the entire galaxy. Following a cataclysmic event born from their own decadence, they fractured into various factions. The Craftworld Arda roam the stars in massive ships, while the Drukhari, also known as the Dark Eldar, thrive in the dark cities feeding from pain and suffering. The Harlequins serve the Laughing God, performing deadly dances both on and off the battlefield. All Eldar possess psychic potential and strive to fend off their race's doom and the predations of the Chaos God Slanesh. Orcs Orcs are brutal and war-loving green-skinned aliens who thrive in combat. With these, what you see is pretty much what you get. They are pretty wild, very dangerous, and quite entertaining. Necrons ancient skeletal robotic beings that once ruled vast empires across the galaxy before the rise of mankind. They went into a long stasis to escape a galaxy-wide catastrophe and are now awakened to reclaim their lost dominions. Originally organic beings, they transferred their consciousness into metallic forms through a pact with ancient star-eating entities called the Catan, who they would later betray and shatter into shards. Known for their advanced enigmatic technology and undying nature, the Necrons seek to restore their ancient glory and rid the galaxy of younger races. Tyranids Extragalactic hive-minded organisms that devour entire worlds, stripping them of all biological and mineral resources. Comprised of countless different bioforms that are constantly adapted for warfare, they are directed by the psychic hive mind. 
Tyranids operate as swarms, traveling in massive fleets called high fleets, and are drawn to the Milky Way by powerful psychic signals. They are a near unstoppable force, driven by a primal instinct to feed and assimilate all in their path. The Tau. A young, technologically advanced species driven by a philosophy known as the Greater Good. They rapidly expanded their interstellar empire with the aim of uniting the galaxy in peace and prosperity, known for their advanced battle suits and ranged weaponry. The Tau maintain a certain system, they dedicate each one of their units to specific roles like warfare, science and diplomacy. They often seek to assimilate other species through diplomacy, but won't hesitate to use force if necessary. Now there are of course many other minor factions, sub-factions and splinter groups that exist, each adding layers of depth to the vast and complex tapestry of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. As our journey through the vast and intricate expanse of Warhammer 40k comes to a close, we've only just scratched the surface of this richly woven tapestry of stories, conflicts and civilizations. From the majestic halls of terror to the furthest reaches of the galaxy, the 41st millennium is a testament to the power of imagination and the timeless allure of epic narratives. Whether you're a veteran of countless tabletop battles or a newcomer eager to dive into the lore, the grim dark future of 40k offers endless tales of heroism, betrayal and warfare. Thank you for venturing with us into this universe where truly, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Thank you all so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time on Explore.